Hi, welcome back to the coffee break. Hope you're enjoying your day so far and hopefully that cubicle is just not more than you can handle for the day. Hey, just wanna to talk to you about a couple of things. Last time we spoke a little bit about living a holy life and how do you know how to live in today's society, especially when we come to the question of, oh, you're in church, don't lie. But let's go beyond that just a little bit. How would you answer the question, how am I supposed to live today? Even though it might be something that doesn't relate anything to church or anything to what the preacher talked about this past week, how, do we, how are we supposed to make those decisions? Uh, let's take a look at some, some passages of scriptures here, one passage of scripture that basically says the following. Uh, it comes out of Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. You know, whenever we try to live life in the way that God wants us to live, we not only look at the things that he has talked about in the Old Testament or in the scriptures as a whole, but we also look for one other thing, and that's the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you want to be in such a manner that says, I want to please Christ whenever he returns. I'm going to live my life in such a way that he's going to be excited with how I live my life, or is he going to be disappointed with the way that you're living your life? You see, what's interesting about this passage of scripture is basically he's talking about the one who gave himself to redeem us. In other words, to set us free by paying a great price. Think about that great price that God has paid for your life and for my life, for my life. From all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Ask yourself the question, are you eager to please him? Uh, in 1 John 3, 3, it says, everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. I want to make one comment. You know, a full understanding of these things leads to godly living. Do you understand the price that has been paid for you? Do you understand it in such a way that it is applicable to your life, that you're trying to change the things that God wants you to change? People who don't do those things basically is saying one of two things. Number one, I really don't understand what it is that God is trying to teach me or what he's trying to tell me, or I don't believe them to begin with. Which is it with you? Think about that the rest of this day. Go back to that cubicle and just irritate the person next to you. But think on the things that gives Christ glory and honor. Have a great day. See you soon.